Hey, it's Tommy Gunn from Cracked Rabbit Gaming, and one of the few changes that they made to eventing in RPG Maker MV when compared to Ace is that the select key items command, if we look at my little diagram here, here's Ace, select key item, change to select item. And now you can select from four different item types, regular items, key items, hidden item A and B. So this video is gonna be about sort of why you would use these different uh, item types um, more than how you use key items, uh, because I already did a video on using key items and what that's all about. And, and it's for Ace, but the same thing applies here, except now you can select regular items and hidden items um, as well as key items. So feel free to watch that video if you don't understand how key items work at all, but I will explain that a little bit later uh, briefly in this video. Um, so I asked on the forum for some suggestions and I got a couple good ones. So I did, uh, I made a couple demos. So I'll show you those demos and then I'll show you how I coded those if you're interested. Um, and definitely leave a comment if you have a good idea of your own about how to use the select items command. Um, so first of all, um, oh, and as usual, I have timecode links in the description, so feel free to jump around in this video if you want. Um, so here, I just uh, have my little map set up so that this code will give me 10 of every item right at when I start it, just for the purposes of this demo. You wouldn't normally want to do this uh, in your game, but um, you'll see why I'm doing this in a second. So um, let me just launch this and show you what is going on um, and yeah so just to show you um, so there I have 10 of every item obviously I don't have very many items set up in this game um, so here's the first demo and this guy will trade three gears for any item so um, again 10 items uh, for everything so I'm going to trade him a potion and then if we do it again, you'll see now my gears has turned to 13 and I lost a potion. So that's all what we wanted. And so this is all key items do uh, as far as the player is concerned is it will pop up this box uh, with this grid list of all your items, you know, either your regular items or your key items or hidden items. Um, and then how you use it is up to you. So this is one way you can do it. Um, this is sort of this way you can trade items. Um, and it's cool because now that you can select regular items, uh, maybe you have some system where, you know, your player gets a ton of potions and doesn't really need a ton of potions. And now you can trade in uh, your potions to some guy and he'll give you some, you know, some other item or, um, which, you know, if you only have one item you're gonna do that with, you don't need to use key items, but in this case, uh, you can select any item you have. And you may have realized there's like a little flaw in this logic here uh, in that if you give him a gear, he'll give me three. So that would just give me infinite gears. But of course I uh, preempted that by coding uh, a little thing there. So he will not trade uh, gears for gears. Okay, so next we have a card game. And this was a suggestion by RPG Guy on the forum. So she will bet us one gold and she's gonna deal. Highest card wins, tie goes to the dealer. This is a very boring, simple card game. Um, but anyway, uh, and also I have 10 of every item, like I said, which doesn't make any sense because of course I'm just gonna play the highest card. Um, normally you would randomize this, but I'll talk about that more when I'm showing the coding. So. She played a three of diamonds, I played an ace, so of course I won. And if I do it again and purposely pick uh, a two, she beat me and yep, she beat me. So there you go. Um, there's another idea. Hopefully you will make a more interesting card game. Um, and then here's the third demo, which was suggested by Shaz. Um, and she she just suggested using it as an alternative to uh, show choices. And so show choices is limited. Uh, you know, it used to be four choices. Now it's six in MV. Um, 
and you can nest them so you can have more than that. Um, but this way you can have really unlimited because they're all um, just, you know, as, as many items as you can have really. Uh, so what I'm using it for is sort of a point and click adventure game type of thing. So I'm going to interact with this computer and it says, what would you like to do? And uh, now here, this doesn't really make sense that I have 10 of them. Uh, you should probably just hide that number entirely if you're going to do something like this, because it doesn't make any sense. Um, unless you have some weird game where you can, you have a limited number of times you can pick some, something up. Um, anyway, uh, and I just use icons that are built into the game. So normally I would have put better icons in here. So we can look at the computer. Eh, it's a computer. Pretty boring. Uh, oops. Uh, we can try talking to the computer. We can open the computer. And so this is just simple. It, uh, I don't actually have, um, you know, nothing actually happens. It just, it just gives you a comment on, on all the things you do. Uh, in a real game, you know, you would have items being transferred when you, you know, like you use the computer and then you get some information or something. So that goes in your inventory, you know, or whatever. Um, or you have to use, like maybe you have a disc in your inventory and then you have to use it in the computer or something, you know, or a CD, whatever. And then I also did it on the piano. Um, so you can do some stuff like this. And you get the idea. So that is it for the demos, and now I will show you how key items work and how I coded these ones in particular. So if we go to the first demo here, um, when you're setting it up, you use the select item command, and then you choose your variable. Um, you could use the same variable for all of them. Um, possibly depending on, you know, if you need it to remember later on in the game, what you chose earlier in the game, then you'd want to use different variables. Um, but here, so I have item to trade and this is variable number six. And then I just have a conditional branch set up. And when you use this, and so I have it on regular items in this case, um, when you use this, then the item that the, the player selects gets the number of the item, like the ID number goes, gets set to that variable. So that's why all you have to do is set up conditional branch that uses that variable, you know, if that variable is equal to, you know, and then whatever the ID number is. So zero is if the user cancels, if the player just hits, you know, the X button or whatever to cancel out. Um, so then he just says, okay, maybe next time. Um, then I have else if item to trade is five, which is the gear. Um, so, you know, you could set the gears as, uh, like key items or something. And that way it wouldn't show up in the regular items, but I just left it as regular items. And then obviously in your game, you would want the gears to actually do something. So you would have another character who offers to build you something with the gears, or maybe gears is just some other weird currency and he will trade you for gears. Um, but I didn't set any of that up. Now I do have a more complicated, uh, demo that I created, uh, that's sort of like fallout four where you can scrap items and it turns into different materials. Like one item turns into multiple different materials, and then you can use those different materials to create something else. And that's going to be my next video. So if you're interested in that, um, check that out, but that's kind of like too complicated to go into in this video. Cause I wanted to keep this one a little shorter. Um, now, so then if it's not a gear, then it passes all the checks and else, then he just says, nice doing business with you. Now I'm using a script call because I don't want to have to check every single item. I don't want to say if the item, you know, that if the variable selected, meaning, you know, if the player chose a potion, then do this. And if the po player chose item number two, then do this and, you know, take out that item and everything. So one line of code easily <laughs> completes this. And I have it 
separately. Um, so obviously, since no matter what item you give, he's giving you three gears, I can just use the regular add three gears to your inventory. Um, but the script call is right up here. So um, this takes out the item that you that the player used. So if I use a potion, then it takes out the potion. If I use you know whatever whatever the other <laughs> items were, it'll take those out. Um, so I color coded a little bit just to make it easier. So in red, um, this is the variable that I chose for the key items. So um, normally the the ID here, like ID number one, is the potion. So you just have like the number one here. But if we put that variable in, then no matter what the variable is set to, that's what gets taken out of your inventory. So that's all this code is doing. Game party dot lose item data items. You know, it's kind of long, um, but you can just copy and paste it. I'll, I'll put this code in the description if you want to just copy and paste it. Um, obviously, you'll have to change the values of things um, depending on you know what variable you use and stuff like that. But anyway, so that's all this one is doing. And so this is just using regular items. And on to the next one. Here's this very boring card game, like I said. And uh, now, oh, I should show you the way I have items set up. So um, here is where you change the item type. So if you want regular item, key item, and then your two hidden um, items. And so the hidden items, those just give you two different categories so that things are kept separate. So in this case, I have the cards um, set up as hidden item A. So then when I ask for a hidden item A, it only shows the cards and it doesn't show anything else. And then for that other demo with the adventure game thing, I have that as hidden item B. So then it only shows those. Um, otherwise, they'd all be mixed together if you are doing both of these things in your game and that won't make any sense. And maybe in your game you'd want even more things, uh, more systems like this. And you could remove, like, if it's something temporary, like like this adventure game thing, you could remove all these items from your inventory um, before something else happens. Like, you know, it removes all these, then it adds, you know, some random cards so you can play the card game, and then it removes all the cards, and then it puts these back, you know, or whatever, or goes on to something else. Um, because there are only two hidden item categories, unfortunately, like, you know, it could be really useful in your game. Um, so that is a thing you could do, but that could get uh, very annoying, especially like in this case, where maybe I just want all these to be in your inventory all the time. I don't have to keep removing them and adding them again. Um, so anyway, so these cards, I just used uh, Unicode characters and I just pasted them in to give the icons for the different suits. So what you could also do is actually create an icon or, you know, this is the default, but you'd create an icon for the different suits and then you could, you know, spell out the name or you could even spell out the whole thing, seven of hearts um, as the name. And maybe that would look better in your, in your game. Um, so yeah, that is all you can ignore. The other stuff that I have going on in here. Um, so yes, back to the boring card game. Um, I just have <laughs> her get uh, a random number set. Well, so okay. So first, it it wants you to play your card first. So it selects your item, and this is set to variable fourteen. And then her card gets set to variable thirteen. And hidden item A. And so then her card is chosen by random, and this is just random one through 10. And I did that <laughs> to be lazy because obviously there's no card 14, you know, that would be an ace. Uh, but I don't want it to say she, she played card number 14 because that doesn't exist. So you'd have to check for that and say like, if she has card 14, then display the text saying it's an ace instead of 14. So I just didn't bother with that. Uh, so she's only can ever play one through 10. So I can always win um, if I wanted to, but this is just a demo. Um, and your game hopefully will be more interesting than just high, low cards anyway. So uh, then I have this display, this display what she played and she just always displays uh, or always plays a diamond card because 
the suits don't actually matter in this game anyway. And then I just have the short code uh, for the variable. And so variable number 13 is her card. So it'll just throw the number in there. And I forget if this code is built in or if that's with one of Yanfly's scripts, but um, I'll, actually, if I just hover, it'll show. Okay, yeah, that's built in. Um, slash, slash V and then brackets for the number of the variable. Um, and then again, I have a script going and I will show you that in the separate window. So what is going on here? Oh, and yes, so note, uh, note tags should have shown that. So on all of these cards, because the card value doesn't necessarily match up, I mean, it completely doesn't match up here um, because I started you know, at, at number 15, you could start at the beginning and just have the ace uh, you know, is number one, although ace is high in this game, so it's actually 14. Uh, but then you could have you know, two, item two is a two, item three is a three, but uh, I did not add all the cards, and they are out of order and not matching up with the ID numbers. So I had to get around that. Um, so I used a note tag. And so you can use whatever text you want, but I just did card underscore value and then the value of the card. So 14 for ace, you know, 7, 10, 12 for a queen, 13 for a king. You get the idea. So back to this. Um, there's the note tag. Uh, then you could also, if you do need suits in your game, you could have another tag with the suit and you could, I mean, you could spell it out if you wanted to, that would require other, uh, you know, coding. So it's probably easier to just use numbers and just have, you know, just remember, you know, write down what you, you did, like club is one, diamonds is two, you know, whatever. Um, but I didn't bother with any of that in this game. So then here is the code. Um, so this is just your card right here is greater than her card. So again, just like up above, we have the script call for a variable. So 13 is the variable for the card that she chooses. And 14 is the card that you chose from the key item or from the select items command. And wrapped around that is the code to get that note tag value. So here we have card value, which is matching what I named it, but you know you can name it whatever you want. Uh, just make sure you change it down here too. And then just copy all the rest of this code. <laughs> so uh, number is just ensuring that it is uh, treated as a number and not a string or anything else. Um, and then, yeah, this is just this is just the code you need to use, dot meta and then dot whatever the name of your thing is. And in this case, I used greater than, um, which means ties, you know, you will lose if it's a tie. Um, you know, that's just the way I did it. You might want ties to go to the player, you know, whatever. Um, and yeah, so that's how that one works. And the final demo um, select item, and again, I have a different variable set up for this. Um, action, it's just number 15, you can name it whatever you want, and hidden item B. And so the nice thing here is that uh, I, so I set these up, and you have to remember what <laughs> what all the the item numbers are. And so what I did when I was writing this is I just used the snipping tool to just copy, just sort of take a small screenshot of my items since I can't have that window open at the same time. Um, either you have to write it down separately or if you have a really good memory, maybe you'll just remember what the numbers are. Uh, I just did this, it's actually really quick. It's kind of stupid that you have to do this, um, but it is really quick to do. Just quickly highlight it, uh, select it, and then it's just saved in here. I didn't even save the image. Um, and then I just had this off to the side while I was typing all this stuff out. So action 25, and then I put a comment in for look at. So I just named them all. And the nice thing here is that if you just leave a blank text box here, um, then you can just take this whole event and just copy and paste it um, wherever you want. And then all those, you know, if you want all those actions to be available. Um, Another thing you could do is you could remove some of those actions. So like, 
say I clicked on the, or you know I want the player to interact with the piano, but I don't want all of these actions to be available. Like I know that the player can't pick up the piano, so I could uh, at the beginning of this remove that action that you know that quote unquote item from the inventory. So then that doesn't even show up as an option. So it's not even available. Um, but in this case, I just wrote, you know, some different things for, for, all the, for all the different actions, even if they made no sense, um, like talking to the piano. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but so this actually makes it pretty easy. Like you could easily just copy and paste this event over, you know, all your different items and then just change it around a little bit um, and just make sure you put comments in there and then you don't need to keep that uh, snip snipping tool open because uh, you just have the comment there that tells you what each one is. Um, and so yeah, so this is really simple. So just you're selecting the item, it's getting set to the action variable and then if the action is 25, then you know I know that they selected look at and then I have whatever whatever you want happen. And yeah, this, I just have it give text. It doesn't do anything else. You would probably, uh, you know, in a real point and click adventure game, you probably want something else happening, like uh, you're gaining items and things like that. Um, but this is actually pretty fun to do. So I think I might actually just make some short little dumb game doing this, you know, maybe like a room escape game or something where you just have to look at all these objects in a room and combine things and figure out how to get out or whatever, you know, might be just a fun little exercise to do. So I think that about wraps it up. If it wasn't obvious, the reason you want to use hidden items is so that they don't show up in your inventory, in the player's inventory, when you open your inventory here. Whoops. Um, you know, you don't want to see all these things that say look at, pick up, you know, whatever, and um, all these cards. Now, I didn't do any demo using the key items, um, but you could, I have key items set up for that other thing I'm going to show in the next video. Um, you could set up key items like for those playing cards or whatever, uh, if that's a big part of your game or, you know, you you have certain cards that you're collecting throughout the game and then you can play them and when you play them they're removed from your inventory and stuff and maybe you want the player to be able to see what cards he or she currently has. Um, you could make that key item and the cool thing about key items is that in uh, terms, wherever it is, here we go, um, key items down here can be renamed to anything you want. So I could actually call that playing cards or whatever and then in their menu it would it would show it as playing cards. So those are just some ideas. There are so many other things you could do with these, things like an achievement uh, system, a quest guide, you know, quest log, whatever. Um, lots of stuff you could do. And uh, if you have any good suggestions, leave them in the comments. Um, I hope that helps. Please like and subscribe.